Inner Sanctum Mysteries, brought to you right through the summer by Bromo Seltzer. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host to welcome you through the squeaking door. Tell me, fellow ghouls, did you ever take in the frights after dark? Hmm? I did the other night. Found an odd little street called Nightmare Avenue. Just two blocks long and a scream wide. Begins with a small cemetery and ends with a bigger one. <laughs> There's a freakish sort of shop in the alley. Ideal for those of you with a buying feeler. Its sign reads, Gadgets, Ghosts, and Graveyard Geegaws. It is deep night on the raging ocean. The fog is a thick gray wall and the wind is sharp. A boat tosses drunkenly in the deep, at the mercy of the storm. It's unlighted except for a sputtering naphtha flare. We're aboard the Gypsy Princess. Beside its captain, the notorious Captain Henty. A few feet away, worming deeper is the shelter of the fog, backing away from Captain Henty's gun, is another man. A younger man wearing a first mate cap. Chambers, I ordered you to come out of that blasted box. You hear me? You murdered what was left of the crew. Corky, McDonald, Pope, Willoughby, Menica. Five men, five bullets. <laughs> the sixth bullet is for you, Chambers. And if you murder me, then what? You alone, a madman without food or drink, haunting his own ship. Then what? I'll find Bellows and strangle him. And then claim the princess. Claim my bride. They don't exist, Bellows, or your bride. They just live in your mind. Oh, I am! The princess is real. You know the princess is real. You saw with your own eyes. Did I, Captain? Or was it just the myth? An illusion. You heard her speak. I heard a voice. But it could have been the wind. It was the princess as real as you and me. Listen. Listen. It's her, my bride. Princess, you come back. Where are you, princess? Hot air. In the storm. What's the matter, Captain? Afraid? Afraid to go over the side even into the arms of the princess? <laughs> it's your love calling me a Captain. You're paying a bride. Are you going to turn your back on her? Uh, I, I've got to kill you first. And lose the princess? Uh. Sandbar under your boat. <laughs> That's funny, son. <laughs> We've been tossing in the fog for days without food or water with an island just out there. 
What island are we on? Dead man's island. Even if you knew where you were, sir, there'd be nothing on the island for you. No food, no drink. Just a place to bury the dead aboard your ship. How do you know they're a dead aboard? I heard some shooting, I said. How many dead? Corky, McDonald, Coach, Weatherby, Mannix. That's five. Captain Hetty jumped over. And Miguel, your navigator? And Jensen? Dead. Then you're the only survivor. Yes, I'm Chambers first mate. I expected it would be Captain Henty I'd find alive. Delivering his cargo of dead men. Say, wait a minute. How'd you know about Miguel, the navigator, and Jensen? Where'd you get your information from? You're a man to seek logic after the events on the gypsy princess. That's strangest. The war. Yeah. <laughs> After two weeks on this floating insane asylum, I shouldn't get goggle eyed over anything. You boarded the ship at the street. You know that too, huh? <laughs> right. For years since I was a kid, I'd heard tall stories. Unbelievable whoppers about Captain Henty and the Gypsy Prince. Stuff about a ship being haunted. About a girl. A beautiful vision named Princess after the ship. Who followed the boat wherever it sailed. I wanted to write it all up after seeing it all for myself. Shall I stop? No. Go on. Those tall stories started coming to life a few hours after we put to sea. I was in Captain Henty's quarters going over some papers when Corky came by the end. Corky handled the business details of the ship like a steward would. Captain Henty? Yes? I was checking over the crew list here. So, Corky? I can't make it add up. McDonald, Coach, Weatherby, Menica, Miguel, Jensen, myself, Chambers here, all signed in okay. Eight men, that's your crew? Eight it is, sir. Up to there. But there's a line signature on the list, but nobody answers to it. What is the ninth name? Fellows. Fellows! Stupid fool! Let the lesson get out! All right, sir. All right, all right, sir. You've, you've seen the signature before, Captain? Yes, from Cape Hatteras to Singapore. I don't get it. Uh, uh, you will. You will in time. You'll know what it means to sail with Bellows aboard. Who is Bellows? The ship's ghost. The gypsy princess was once his ship before he died. How long ago did Bellows die? Ten years ago. And you think a, a dead man signed the cruelest? Captain. Aye, and you'll believe it too in time. In time, you too will believe Bellows is aboard the Gypsy Princess. Chambers? Aye, sir. Search the ship from stem to stern. Search the lifeboats, the passageways everywhere. Then do it again and again. Spend every minute you're on this ship searching for Bellows. Understand? I And find Bellows. Find Bellows or you gypsy princess. That was my first brush with the crazy legend of the gypsy princess. I was to spend the whole voyage looking for a dead man who'd find the crew register. Bellows was master of this ship once. Everything was fine until they both went tapped over a dream lady who was supposed to be following the ship. And she killed Bellows. Got off scot free by pleading self-defense. Then fought the gypsy princess. And went sailing to find the girl. Bellows then is just something in the captain's guilt. 
In his imagination. Oh, no, sir. It's not all in his imagination. Now, you're sounding as balmy as Henty. You don't believe in the Bellows ghost, do you, Corky? I do, indeed. Just you wait, sir. And you'll know Bellows is somewhere aboard the ship. It's, it's Captain Henty on the tube. The haunting's begun, I'll bet my pay. Corky speaking, Captain. Take the wheel at once. But it's Miguel's turn at the wheel, sir. Take the wheel at once. Aye, sir. At once. Is Chambers there? Aye, sir. I'll put him on. He wants you, Mr. Chambers. Chambers speaking, Captain. Turn the ship inside out and stop for nothing, Chambers. Find fellows or we won't have a navigator left aboard. We've been off our course turning in circles with our instruments back to bits for an hour. What happened to Miguel? <laughs> is a jet. What started as a pleasant ocean junket is becoming a nightmare. A ghost looks happy. The captain goes white as a sheet and poor Chambers is handed the odd job of trailing the little man who isn't there to his horn. <laughs> Let's see, where did we scream off, huh? Oh, yes. Miguel, the navigator, had just gone the way of all fish. Miguel was at the boat's wheel, clutching it, and staring out into the ocean with dead eyes. A dead man had been steering our course. How was the fool killed? I can't say, sir. His face looks as if he had seen the devil himself. But there isn't a mark on him. Bellows killed him. I... I hate taking issue with you, sir, but I'm 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 sure that there's a, a simpler explanation than a mysterious attack by a ghost. A, a heart attack, perhaps. If an autopsy could be performed. There'll be no autopsy. But we've got to attack. I'll have no interference, Chambers. I've got to take immediate steps so you'll all be dead. Assign gentlemen to watch the ship's food stores at once. Our food stores. Mind your duties and ask no questions. Make prompt arrangements to throw Miguel over the side. Without services? Just like that? Just like that. We'll throw Miguel as an offering to the princess. Maybe. Maybe she'll reappear. It's been so long since she's appeared. Go on now, make your arrangements. We were a grim lot gathered starboard to watch the dead Miguel dropped over the side. The storm was brewing. There was a blinding fog. Ready, Chambers? All ready, sir. Let him go. Princess Tim, I gave you Miguel. Now come wash the blood off his curse his ship. Crew backed away like men frightened by the faith of insanity. And then, over the sound of the ocean, we heard her. Princess! It was a woman's voice. Or was it the wind? I watched, spellbound, my eyes burning into the mist that swirled around Captain Henty. I saw... I saw her. Beautiful. The most complete illusion of beauty the mind can imagine. Beautiful beyond words or language. Seeing her, I could understand what drove Captain Henty. And seeing her at Captain Henty's side, I knew scorching jealousy. Chambers, I said, my bride has come. You see her, don't you? I She's very beautiful. Chambers, marry us here now. But it... Do I have such authority? As captain of the ship, I give you the authority. You'll find my service book in my quarters. Aye, sir. Corky. Aye, Mr. Chambers. 
Go. Fetch the book of services from the captain's quarters so we can get on with the ceremony. With the crew standing bareheaded and looking on like men bewitched, I married Captain Henty to his vision. <laughs> I quoted such lines as Let no man put asunder And until death do you parted A madman standing alone With a mist curling around him The captain said I do And the wind answered For her The captain had his bride at last But not for long After that brief visit We no longer saw her Even fancied we saw her the captain sat looking out to sea for hours, days, like a man whose bride had forsaken him right after the wedding. Days passed. And then, bellows struck again. I was with the captain going over some charts when the door opened. It was Corky. His face was strained and frightened. Captain Enzi. What is it, Corky? The food stores. What about them? They're gone. Our food and our water. It's all disappeared. Jensen was assigned to watch the food stores. Send the food to me. I, I can't. Jensen's got what Miguel got. We can put into the nearest port. If you look at the chart, we're just a two days' tail from Winter. <laughs> it's the only thing to do. Put our food or drink up and we go on. And without fuel? Fuel? Without coal? How can we go anywhere? I don't get it. Then go down to the engine room and see for yourself. Our coal. Every blasted scrap of it was pirated by fellows last night. The men lay in the hatch, dying of thirst to no food. Captain Henty was a complete madman now, with every pretense to sanity fallen. He prowled through them like a wild animal, with me behind him watching. Then last night in the pitch dark, I watched him climb to the lookout tower. Corky was up there waving a naphtha flare in a last desperate SOS. I watched the captain come up behind Corky and circle his arms around Corky's neck. Help! 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 I hurried to the McCool, the captain away. Let him go, Hendy! Chairman, this is the last time you'll interfere. Go ahead, issue the order. There isn't a man aboard who has the strength but to carry it out. I know you exactly for what you are now, Captain. I know about those murders and the disappeared stores. You! You did all of it! You're the ghost haunting your own ship! How? You think I did it all? I'm sure I You're a madman with your guilt about killing bellows. Your hallucinations about a woman following your ship. You're the curse over the gypsy princess! You and you alone! So that's what you've come to believe. You fool. That's what Bellows wants you and everybody to believe. I saw you try to kill Corky just now. No ghost. You in the flesh. I had to kill Corky. I have to kill you all. Those are my sailing orders. What? Crazy talk is that now? I am to deliver a cargo of dead men. And I mustn't fail or I'll lose the princess, fella. Stand back, Chambers. Don't move. I've got six bullets in this gun, including you, Chambers. The crew is exactly six now. You see, I mustn't waste a single bullet. You're going to shoot us in cold blood just because of some insane obsession. I must. We'll all be dead soon if you just wait. No, no, no. I can't risk it that way. I, Captain Henty of the Gypsy Princess, must personally deliver a cargo of dead men. One bullet for Corky. No! And he shot the other four. Then came after me with his last bullet. 
He went over the side when his phantom bride called. <laughs> I blabbed about everything. Just the bar. I knew the story. All of the story. What? You... You said you'd heard shots and rode over here when you came aboard. I did. But I don't see your rowboat. And your clothes aren't even damp. You were never out there in a small boat for a minute. Wasn't I? No. If you're open up and talk, who are you? She'll tell you who I am. She? The princess. Yeah? No. Look again. With your heart. See her now? <laughs> yes. She's beautiful. Princess! <laughs> your bell! What? I, I don't know. I'm delirious, I guess. You belong to me now, princess. Empty lost you back to me. I watched to float in with the mist. And the same indescribable pleasure and indescribable pain I had seen on Captain Henty's face flushed all through me. I was in love with her. And burning up with jealousy. I was dying of thirst, dying of hunger, too weak to even raise a finger, but I went for Bellows. I didn't want him to have the princess. Bellows! Bellows, I'm going to kill you! Do you hear me, Bellows? Bellows! There's no one here. Just me and the cargo of death in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I imagine how much of it all did I imagine? What? it did to you, Brother Whale, but it's got me scaled down to size. It's the old block for me from now on. There's less terror in terra firma. Dry land to you, Bob. I say, if you must get the nautical urge, compromise by diving into the bathtub, huh? And if a strange hand passes you the wash rag and soap, don't take it. Ignore it. Stay underwater and play. Well, it's time to close that squeaking door for another seven-day rest. Until next week at this time, when Bromo Seltzer brings you another Inner Sanctum Mystery, directed by Hyman Brown. Well, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is Report for a Court by Henry King. Next week, You'll hear our answer to the housing shortage. Because we've got a story about a little home in the country that'll kill you. And anybody else who enters. It's called The House of Doom. And behind its walls, some of the most charmingly gruesome people you ever met will die and haunt and howl and murder to your heart's content. 
So be sure to listen, won't you? Until next Monday, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams.